Mr. President. Senator from Indiana. Mr. President, when it comes to America, I'm an optimist, always. You see, I can't help but approach the future with great hope. After all, as Americans, we've never let obstacles stand in our way or accepted that problems can't be solved. No, our citizens are the world's most ingenious. Our military, it's mightiest. Our economy, the strongest. And our innovators, the most creative. The last century was defined by our accomplishments and our ideals. And I believe this one will be too. But I have to say, Mr. President, this path is not guaranteed. Now as then, America's su success depends on unleashing the potential of our people and out-competing and out-innovating global rivals who don't share our values or our economic interests. Right now, we're in the middle of a great power competition with an authoritarian regime in Beijing that seeks global primacy and rejects democracy. The Chinese Communist Party is currently investing $1.4 trillion in frontier technologies that will dominate the 21st century. Artificial intelligence, quantum computing, hypersonics, among other key technologies. Its innovators are earning patents and publishing research in AI at greater rates than our own. Its schools are producing four times the STEM graduates as America's, and the Chinese Communist Party's computer and science universities are regularly outranking our own. Its military is making advances in cyber warfare and the development of hypersonic weapons, autonomous vehicles, electronic and cyber warfare, and orbital bombardment systems. These are the technologies that will dominate the 21st century economically and militarily. China's government is planning on winning the AI race, winning future wars, and winning the future. And the truth is, if we're being honest with ourselves, Beijing's well on its way to accomplishing these goals. America's at risk of falling behind economically and technologically to a world power that doesn't value liberty or even human life. So how should we respond? For too long, when it comes to Chinese aggression, America has relied on a strategy of deterrence, taking steps like blocking Huawei from doing business in the US, tightening export controls, and improving foreign investment rules. Now, these are important measures, but they're no longer enough. You see, it's, it's time, Mr. President, to go on the offensive. And that's exactly what this legislation, which has gone by many names, from the Endless Frontier Act to the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act to CHIPS Plus, will do. Unleash private sector innovation while significantly boosting federal national security investments. Let me highlight a few specifics. First. This bill greatly encourages domestic investment in semiconductor production. Right now, the United States of America is almost entirely reliant on other nations for high-tech computer chips that power our smartphones, automobiles, household appliances, and military platforms. In fact, the recent shortage of these chips has hobbled our economy. It's hit our pocketbook books. For example, a shortage of computer chips forced General Motors to idle its assembly plant in Fort Wayne, Indiana twice already this year. U.S. semiconductor production, once accounting for nearly 40% of the world's supply, has dropped to just 12%, while China's production share is increasing rapidly. 90% of the chips used in our military technology are made overseas. Let me say that again, 90% of the chips used in our military technology are made overseas. 
Most are made in South Korea and Taiwan, but an increasing number are produced in China. This is a very real economic and national security vulnerability. And this bill will reassert America's place in this industry and take a giant leap towards ensuring that our supply chain and national defense will never be at the mercy of technology produced overseas. Another important aspect of this bill is critical applied research funding. This legislation reforms and invests in the National Science Foundation to partner with pr the private sector and universities to develop critical emerging technologies that will transform the global landscape. We know that national success and competitiveness in the 21st century economy will be built on emerging technologies like quantum computing and artificial intelligence. Funding research crucial to keeping America safe is one of the federal government's responsibilities. And this legislation will help us not just catch up with, but overtake China in these critical areas. And this bill will establish regional technology hubs across our country, which will become centers for the research, development, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing of new key technologies. This is incredibly important at a time when too many Americans in the heartland feel left out and in too many areas overlooked, when only a handful of cities account for nearly 90% of job growth in these advanced sectors. Simply put, this bill will make America stronger, safer, and more prosperous. And it's desperately needed. How do we know? Because the Chinese Communist Party has actively lobbied against this legislation. They know this bill is bad for China and good for the United States of America. This bill is about securing our country, giving our people the tools to flourish, and ensuring America continues its global research role. It's been a long journey to get to this point, but history will show that by passing this CHIPS Plus bill, we're confronting the challenges of today and building a prosperous and secure tomorrow for all Americans. I urge my colleagues to support this legislation. Mr. President, I yield the floor.